All right, I am going to do another series. This time I'm looking at Carl Bau's Creation in the 21st Century, an episode starring John Hefner called Noah's Flood, Fact or Fantasy. I'm going to get started here. I'm your host, Carl Ball, founder and director of the Creation Evidence Museum in Glen Rose, Texas. Okay, I'm going to resist the temptation. I'm not going to put up the slide of the empty warehouse with the crickets, okay? One of my favorites is the Imperial Dinosaur. I call him the Imperial Dinosaur because of the crest, Parasaurolophus. And uh, recent studies have indicated that uh, he literally could use that great crest like a trombone. I don't know why, whenever I hear the word trombone, for some reason I always preface it with the word rusty. Another of my favorites is, of course, the pterodactyl. Recent studies have indicated that a larger portion of the brain was used for flight and aerial motion than birds have. Therefore, he was a superior flight mechanism that stuns us as we look back in time. Use brain superior flight mechanism. I'm not positive that he's putting together these sentences correctly. And then another of my favorites, of course, is Stegosaurus. I call him the Johnny Appleseed of the dinosaur kingdom. What the fuck? Johnny Appleseed? Wow. Um, I swear that he's not all the way there, you know, to, to, to sort of paraphrase from the late, great Sam Kennison, um, I wonder if, you know, poor Mrs. Baugh is walking around going, I, I just don't know, he won't take his medicine. Exponential growth in the educational system, you're a very credentialed educator, and at the same time, you have become a very strong proponent of creation evidence. I'm sorry. But a master's of education with an emphasis in mathematics does not qualify you to talk about things like cosmology, geology, biology. Well, I just believe you can trust God at what he says. In fact, his word says it honors God to believe what he says. Oh, yes, that one again, right? We know that the flood is true because the Bible says so. We know the Bible's true because the Bible says so. One is flood traditions. Right. By my limited research, I've come up with 219 people groups, uh, tribes, nations, nationalities, or whatever, that have a flood tradition in them. And this seems to be no big surprise to anyone outside of the apologist camps. Uh, the reality is, yes, hundreds of cultures in the world, in all of their myriads of legends and myths and stories, have many about water and drowning, okay? That's the common theme that these seem to have. Uh, the apologists claim, and you look at their, their, their source material, is that all of these cultures have the exact same story. You know, how would they have this exact same story if it wasn't based in reality? Uh, well, the, re the fact is, Talk Origins has a, has a page where they describe a lot of these stories in detail. Uh, they, they tell these stories word for word from um, scholarly works on mythologies, and you see that they bear practically no resemblance at all to the uh, story, Noah's flood story, as in Genesis, okay? There's no connection between them except for the fact that, well, there's drowning involved or there's animals involved or there's a boat involved. Um, but the fact of the matter is, flooding and drowning has been part of the human condition for as long as there's been humans. So uh, it doesn't seem very much of, that much of a stretch that there would be stories worldwide involving such things. And historians tell us whenever a legend is globally common, it probably has its basis in fact. Do historians tell us that? Name one. Provide, provide a, an example of that because uh, I'm going to say that's a load of shit. Yes, well, it does. If that's just a myth, a fantasy as you say, why do you have so many people groups all around the world that have so many similarities? And in fact, in this chart here, now you know math teachers love bar graphs and charts and stuff like that, so forgive me, but it gets a lot of data out. If it's green, uh, that means it's full representation of the biblical idea. So here's a handful of those 219 cultures. And uh, notice how many rows are nearly solid green. There was an ark provided, destruction by water, humans were saved. It was a universal destruction. And if there's, there's a red uh, triangle, that means it's a partial representation of the biblical data, which yes. all of that's exactly what we would expect. All right, to better illustrate uh, what he's trying to say here, I made a duplicate of his chart uh, so I could take a closer look at it. Um, his is kind of hard to see at times. Uh, hopefully this will show up. 
Um, so I did. I hopefully fairly accurately copied every single bit of information from his chart onto this. And I thought, I will take a, a look at one, um, and spe it's just specifically to illustrate. Now, as he said, green are where the story matches the Bible account exactly, right? While the, the red slash, the red triangles indicate where it's close but not quite exact, okay, if that makes sense. So I thought I would look at the Cree story, the uh, native story. Uh, there, there's a very identical legend uh, in the Ojibwa uh, tradition as well. It's they're practically the same, so that, that, the reason, that's the reason why I picked that one. Um, but I'm gonna, first I'm going to tell you this story, and then I'm going to go through his, his things in detail, all right? So according to the Cree story, uh, Wissakechak, an old magician, uh, was paddling his canoe out at sea when a sea monster who hated him decided to lash the sea with its tail uh, in an attempt to drown Wissa Ketchatak. Wissa Ketchatak, sorry. Um, however, in doing this, he caused waves that flooded the land. Okay. Wissatak had built a great raft and he gathered all the animals on it before they drowned. Uh, the sea continued to rise until all of the mountains were covered. Um, so, searching for land, he couldn't find any, so he decided to send a duck, a diving duck, to dive to the bottom of the sea and bring him up some earth. Um, and he, the duck drowned, it was too deep, so he sent a muskrat. The muskrat went down, found some earth, brought it back up, and Wissakechak took this earth and he sculpted land out of it. Um, he dried it, he floated it on top of the water, and it became the whole earth. All right, so that that's that's the story as as in the Cree story. Now let's go through these in a little bit more detail and see what he says. Okay, he has an exact match with the Bible account when there's an ark provided. Um, well, I wouldn't say an ark was provided. It says a raft that he built himself. Um, I suppose you could say that's somewhat similar. Um, Destruction by water. Okay, yes, there was destruction by water. All that that granted, although it wasn't God letting it rain for forty days and forty nights, or the fountains of the deep breaking open, or the destruction of a crystalline canopy. It was a sea monster lashing its tail. Uh, humans were saved. Well, one. Animals were saved. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll grant that animals were saved. Universal destruction. Well, destroyed the world, destroyed the earth. Uh, I don't know if that counts as universal or not. Uh, birds went out. Well, sending a duck to die for Earth is not quite the same as, you know, the Bible story either. Um, what I want to emphasize with these, though, this is the, the part that I think is important, is that that, you, you heard the story, you know, all of you are familiar with the Genesis account, you know that is his his standard. His, that's his, th that's what he counts as. In other words, a an old wizard making a raft and being attacked by a sea monster is exactly like mankind became wicked and God had it rain for 40 days and 40 nights. You see, th that's the standard that he's keeping for exact. So um, I'm going to take a shot in the dark and guess that the same is going to hold with every one of these stories. And a lot of these stories, by the way, are based, I mean, they're from the same origin as the uh, Judeo-Christian story of Noah and the Ark anyways. Um, so that that's sort of cheating in my opinion. Um, and one final point I want to make about this this flood traditions thing, in and and I don't know specifically in these cases, but I do know for a fact that there are instances of because of Christian missionaries uh, early on, a lot of Bible stories got incorporated into people's traditions worldwide that weren't there beforehand. Um, and I've I've on a, I've had I've had the discussion. I've actually argued with people about it, where people have told me, no, no, our people knew all about. You know, we had a story of Jesus. You know, we, when the missionaries came and told us about Jesus, we knew. We said, oh yeah, we we know all about Jesus because it was in our stories too. When what they're doing is they're 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 long time ago missionaries pushed these stories onto these people. And then they became, they sort of adapted them and they changed the names and things and adapted them into their own traditions. And this is common. Uh, that's why uh, I've, I've worked with a lot of Clinket people. Clinket have a story, Noah's in the Ark. They have a practically identical Noah in the Ark story, but it's so identical, it's clearly lifted. It's clearly from this, but they will absolutely insist to you if you, you know, it, it's not worth arguing over, but they will insist that, no, 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 this, this was, we knew this story long before missionaries came. When that's 
simply false. I find it very interesting. In fact, a, a chemistry professor at Kilgore College, where I'm on the adjunct faculty, a Professor All Young, wonderful professor, Christian man, he pointed this out to me that in Chinese writing, the uh, symbol for a large ship is actually a combination of three other symbols, boat plus eight people. Marvelous. Boat, boat plus eight people equals large ship. That would be a really neat fun fact if it wasn't completely and totally full of shit. Um, this, this is something, this is another one of those little stories that, that I, I see circulated around in this, in uh, creationist literature, um, where it's presented as fact, and a lot of people are pretty, you know, find it really impressive. Uh, the reality is, the, the symbols on the right, first of all, are called phonetics. They're, they're how you pronounce the word. Um, and the symbol at the top right is not the symbol for eight, it's the symbol for divide or divided. The symbol down below is called a radical, and it means mouth. Okay. Now, I don't know how that all fits together or anything like that, but the whole point that it says, you know, boat plus eight plus people is just, it's just, it's bullshit. Okay. Um, it's, again, repeated, but false. And those that are anywhere at all knowledgeable of the scripture know that the claim is that Noah and his wife their three sons and three daughters-in-law, a total of eight humans, were saved during the flood. Of course, on this program, we have shown how the math works very easily. Oh, yes. Bringing a world human population from eight about 4,500 years ago. There's no mental gymnastics to get to six and a half billion people, or 6.6, .6, roughly, what we have on the planet today. Ah, uh, yes, uh, I'll put a link down below, or maybe I'll put it in, add an annotation, I don't know. Uh, John Hefner did this whole thing where he backtracked the modern population to eight people in 4,400 years or some, some crap like that. Uh, again, his math is absolutely and totally shit. You know, an interesting thing that's been brought out on this program was the clean animals, he was commanded to take seven pairs for sacrifice. Yes. And uh, so... It's already been pointed out in, a, in another program, of course, that in the American Academy of Sciences brought this information to us, that every goat, for example, on the planet uh, came from one of four females. So if, in fact, Noah might have sacrificed three female goats, isn't that exactly what we would expect to find today, is that that DNA, mitochondrial DNA studies would point to one of four lines, original goats. That's exactly consistent That's with marvelous. the biblical account. That is right, and it is academic posture that deserves to be stated. And As I pointed out in my last video about John Hefner, where he made the same claim, that domestication event, or that, that mitochondrial DNA, that information showed that there were four separate domestication events, not all descended from four contemporary female goats. Okay? He's... he's making that up he's leaving out all of the he's leaving out the fact that that domestication events occurred thousands of years apart okay they weren't all at the same time it wasn't a herd of goats living on noah's ark and uh, so i thought this is good i have a friend uh in uh my area brian king who has this model of noah's ark based on a 450 foot or an 18 inch cubit okay. and an 18 wheeler for a sense of scale now of course we know there were no 18 wheelers at this time how do you know there weren't 18 wheelers? Were you there? But they're around now, and it's a familiar object of size. Certainly for comparison. And you can see a couple of six-foot men in. I don't know if the cameras can pick that up, but it was a very huge vessel. The largest wooden vessel ever uh, engineered and designed exactly. uh, in the history of planet Earth. Yes, that's right. In fact, at least half again larger than the largest wooden vessel ever made. Um, by the way, those large wooden vessels have a problem. They tend to break apart when they're actually it out in the ocean. Um, larger vessels, large vessels basically functionally over 300 feet could not be made until they had uh, steel banding to put to hold the boat together. Uh, the fact is, Noah's Ark, the first, remember this wasn't calm seas, we're talking about this worldwide deluge that's, that's carving the Grand Canyon and that kind of shit. Uh, would have been torn to pieces.